1993, Michael Jackson was cementing his legacy as the king of pop, embarking on the Dangerous Tour. Michael was at a high in his career, selling millions of records, being honored by the Grammy Academy, as well as letting the world into his personal life with an unprecedented interview with Oprah Winfrey that is to this day the most watched interview in television history. Michael was at what seemed to be a high in his life after going on tour for his multi-platinum album Dangerous, becoming his fourth album to sell over 15 million records by 1993. By the end of the summer, Michael's personal life will once again be the talk of the world. But unlike the interview with Oprah, Michael would not invite the press in. Like so many times in his life, they entered by force. In August of 1993, while Michael was deep into the third leg of his Dangerous Tour, Evan Chandler, the father of Jordan Chandler, approached Michael and his team demanding $20 million, claiming Michael had money. Jordan numerous times over multiple months. Michael countered the offer with $1 million only for Chandler to lower his request to $15 million. Of course, since Michael always said he was innocent, he declined and only offered $350,000, which Evan declined. After this, the Chandler family would turn Michael's sub-creative fantasy land upside down. If September of 1993 Evan Chandler filed a lawsuit against Michael Jackson on behalf of his 13-year-old son Jordan. That's right, not a criminal investigation, but a civil lawsuit. This was the third attempt in under a month by Chandler to get so-called justice, demanding money, not jail time, every time. This is definitely suspicious to me, as you would think a father would want to see his child hurt or at least in prison. Instead, they of course asked for money. Michael and his team thought it was suspicious too, because in November of 1993, they asked the court to postpone the civil trial until the criminal case concluded, which makes perfect sense to me and was how the OJ case was settled. OJ went on trial and even though he was found not guilty, he was later found guilty in civil court. The judge didn't agree somehow and Jackson's request was denied. Dude, the trial was set for March 21st, 1994. The trial would never happen as on January 25th, 1994, Michael was settled out of court with the Chandler family for $23 million. Because of this, the civil trial was dropped and Jordan did not participate in the criminal investigation. No charges were ever filed against Michael Jackson for this case. Even though no charges were filed against Michael and no proof was ever presented, many people in the public turned on Michael, including the entire media. For the rest of his life, the media in Hollywood would mock Jackson, using his allegations as a shield to hide their ignorant, racist, clout-chasing shtick. While no charges were ever filed, a criminal investigation against Michael did take place. Multiple children were interviewed under oath by the Santa Barbara Police Department. Michael had never tried to do anything sexual, according to witnesses, including Wade Robeson. Remember that name. Since there was no trial and the public back and forth only went on from August to January, this is the case we know the least about and is the hardest to disprove. We don't even know the details of what allegedly happened like we do other cases, so it's hard to dissect. One thing we can dissect is the lives of Evan Chandler and his son Jordan. The first red flag to me is that Evan seemed to only be concerned in somehow gaining financially from his son's alleged abuse instead of wanting to see the guy dead or in jail like Michael's sister Janice said. Not only did Evan put a price tag on his son's abuse, he was willing to negotiate the price down like he was buying a new car. Not only did he try to go after Michael for his money, he was on tape saying he's going to make sure Michael never sold another record. It's humiliated beyond belief. I will not believe it. He will not believe it's going to happen. And beyond, beyond his worst nightmares, he sell one more record. This attorney I found, I mean, I even find 
Once I make that phone call, this guy is just going to destroy everybody in sight in any devious, nasty, cruel way that he can do it. And I've given him full authority to do that. <laughs> It'll be a, a massacre if I don't get what I want. If I go through with this, I win big time. I will get everything I want, and they will be, told, they will be destroyed forever. They will be destroyed. June is going to lose Jordy. She will have no right to ever see him again. Yeah. That's a fact, Dave. That's what's going that help Michael's career will be over. Does that help Jordy? Michael's career will be over. And does that help Jordy? That's irrelevant to me. To me, this doesn't sound like a man trying to get justice for his son. The next year after the settlement, Jordan saw legal emancipation from his parents as well as not speaking to his father during his adult life. Evan Chandler committed suicide just five months after Michael passed away. That sounds like a guilty conscience to me. May he rot in garbage. This video is about disproving the disgusting allegations against Michael. I also want to take a second to see how Michael reacted to the allegations and how they affected him in his career. In 1992, Michael reconnected with Lisa Marie Presley who would eventually become his wife the same year Michael settled the allegations. The daughter of the late Elvis would be a huge part of Michael's life during this rough time. Lisa Marie and Michael fell in love during this time with Lisa Marie sang in her 2003 book, I believe he didn't do anything wrong and he was wrongly accused and yes, I started to fall for him. Seeing Michael at was certainly his lowest point up to 1993, Lisa saw Michael's health failing as he was falling into an addiction to pain medication. Lisa insisted to Michael that he just settle because she didn't think a long public trial would be good for Michael's health. I agree. Five months after the settlement, Lisa and Michael got married and she would be at his side for the remainder of their marriage and always saying she believed he was innocent even after his death. A lot of moonwalkers don't like Lisa Marie, but I think she is misunderstood. Michael was her husband and they had issues and it was not our right to judge. She always stood beside him and proclaimed his innocence and I respect her for that. But unfortunately their marriage did not last with Lisa Marie filing for divorce in December of 1995. Michael released his first piece of new music since 1991's Dangerous and his first since the allegations in 1995 with History, Past, Present and Future, Book 1. History is Michael's most personal album. He really opened up in songs like Childhood, This Time Around, DS, Stranger in Moscow and more. Michael decided to make a personal album after his sister Janet suggested it. Unlike her brother, Janet had a history of being more open in her music. His story also saw the superstar siblings work together for the first time officially with Scream. History was a successful album launching an even more successful world tour in 1996 and 1997. Even though the album had a number one single and a top five single in the US as well as selling 10 million albums worldwide in just one year, Michael saw a clear decline in album sales. While it took his story a full year to sell 10 million records, Dangerous managed to sell the same amount in just three months. Bad sold 7 million copies in its first week and 18 million copies in its first year. I hate comparing to Thriller, but Thriller sold 21 million copies in his first year. In 2001, Michael released what would be his least successful album in his career, Invincible. I actually think by 2001, a lot of the backlash from the allegations had died down and Michael was being celebrated as the king of pop, rightfully so. I think the so-called failure of the Invincible album was strictly due to the lack of promotion from Sony. That is a video for another day, but a few reasons why I think that is true is Invincible so at a similar rate to history in its early weeks of the album. The only promoted song on the album You Rock My World became a top 10 hit in the US and Michael's 30th anniversary celebration was watched by 30 million viewers in the US alone just a month before the album was released.
1996, Michael Jackson married Debbie Rowe after she agreed to be the surrogate mother to his children. They had two children together, Michael Joseph Jackson Jr., known as Prince, in 1997, and Paris Catherine Jackson in 1998. Michael also had his third child, Prince Michael Jackson II, formerly known as Blanket, now known as BG, in 2002 to an unknown surrogate mother. This concludes part one of this multi-part series defending Michael Jackson against these disgusting allegations.